morning in the morning out with the dogs one of my favorite places which is uh when the sea is incredibly calm and flat it's been raining this morning but it's quite humid and it's quite warm and uh but um yeah in the previous conversations we've been talking about you know crypto winter well we've all been here before haven't we really those of us have been around we know what's going on you know that certain people are are making a fortune out of it um and we did touch on whether it was all going to collapse well 90-95 percent of it is going to sort of disappear which is a good thing it's like clearing out the supply chain in a in a traditional sort of you know we we run a, a global manufacturing economy 95 percent of things are made in factories and um disproportionate amount of those are made in the far east of course which are shipped over so we have this enormous and what tends to happen, as I've said before, is, is that manufacturing companies, rather than build to order, you know, they mass produce, and then you get uh, a disconnect by, from orders to actual supply, and then you get this enormous amount of uh, inventory backing up into, into warehouses and within the supply chain. And supply chain systems are unable to, to monitor and measure that by and large, not, not in total, totality. Uh, and the manufacturers still chunk, chuck it out and then you have seasonal shifts and demands and you have tightening of the purse strings and then consumer behavior and demand changes so there you go that's that's economics that we live in um so i've been you know i've been thinking about you know blockchain it's bloody disappointing isn't it really blockchain um it's performance is pants and you know it just hasn't delivered um blockchain is a native payment for you know the, the the bitcoin world i mean it's been destroyed isn't it bitcoin is a payment which is meant to be the people's the people's currency and then ethereum well goodness knows what's going on ethereum it's dying on its ass and bitterly said oh you know will uh, it's going to take a few more years to get 2.0 and, and to scale it what well, he's been promising scaling for ages as everybody else has and then to deflect the attention with NFTs, he's come up, soul, was it soul bound tokens? Jesus, does he think we're all stupid? Anyway, it's all attention, deflecting attention. It's, it's you know, one of the masters of this is, you know, Cardano and Polkadot, which is promise, 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 smoke and mirrors, you know, get the community behind you, release bits and pieces, you know, and get them to say good things. But, you know, it's not here, is it? The thing about the thing about blockchain is it's not enterprise grade and we touched on sort of web 2 web 3 earlier in earlier conversations web 2 being you know centralized data structures centralized you know pulling and processing of data nothing real time about it so you know your customers moved on to the next sort of location or next product and you're still analyzing the data of of that customer's behavior and journey Whereas Web3 is all about real time. It's about analysing it on the fly and predicting and, uh, and, and being able to influence that customer behaviour in real time or as close to real time as you can. So it's a different kind of architecture and processing. And that's what Web3 is about. But you know, blockchain can't do that either. You, know, you, you don't have a transaction for us to start with. You know, all blockchains do is record token movements from John to Fred but it doesn't actually say what Fred gave John in return. There's no receipt, and there's certainly no confirmation of an asset transfer. So blockchain doesn't have practicalities, whereas you go to a distributed ledger, the difference being is, is, is that architecturally it's very, very different. DLTs you can, you can normally permission, normally within industries or industry sectors involving many of the same players they collaborate but dlts you can have a permissioned environment where all the different network nodes have a different purpose you know a pricing node or a member node or a validation node and it, there is still decentralization there is still independence immutability there is still you know the collective openness of things being run properly the difference between DLTs, apart from having more transaction processing, you know, natively, is that it is enterprise grade. I mean, Hyperledger and R3 in particular 
they've been testing this stuff for years and it works at scale blockchain doesn't work at scale it's not even showing promise or close to working at scale so there you go just a thought talk soon